And in this set, I want to show you a little bit of difference between stealing different kinds of systems. And when within the scope of ethical hacking, what that means is actually uh, taking it for purposes of proving that you could do naughty things to it, uh, not actually running off and sticking it on eBay or doing something else with it. But stealing a laptop, stealing a server, and stealing an infrastructure server have very, very different effects on an enterprise. If an attacker steals one of these things, certainly stealing any of these or even physically compromising them for a length of time is useful. But stealing these has different impacts. And you may think to yourself, well, obviously stealing a server or an infrastructure server is going to be more effective or, or give me more data than stealing a laptop. But you'd be surprised how much stealing a laptop can give you, not just in monetary value, but in value of attacking an enterprise. This one's probably the most obvious. Laptop computers are made to be portable. Because they're made to be portable, well, they're made for the ease of use and portability for the authorized user. But as an ethical hacker, I want to make them portable as well for my own nefarious purposes. So they're generally speaking the easiest. They're the most comfortable. And frankly, people that take laptops uh, home with them or on the road with them, they just assume that everybody has a laptop. Folks in a company that you might be doing some some ethical hacking with or some penetration testing with, they're not really going to flinch if they see you walking around with a laptop because everybody walks around with a laptop. And most of the time, laptops are not personalized to the degree that they're going to recognize that that laptop is not yours. In fact, I've I've had experiences where I'll walk by someone with a laptop and it's their laptop and they don't notice because they think their laptop is at their desk. They might think they chained it up. They might think that their desk is secure. I walk right by them with their laptop and there's no no flinch, no notice at all, because all laptops typically look alike, especially in a corporate environment where there's usually a standard for the laptop. If you've got 50 people in a company and 40 of them have the exact same identical laptop, they're not going to notice someone else walking by with an identical laptop. Users, generally speaking, don't secure laptops in any meaningful way. In older operating systems, logging onto laptops was as easy as hitting the escape key. Often in modern laptops, there's a password requirement. They may be joined to a domain or secured in some way. But frankly, most of the time, these passwords are either easily accessible uh, through easy compromise of, of just trying a few different guesses, or they're written down somewhere on the laptop or on a, a, a sticky note near the laptop. Worst case, it'll be a brute force attack, but it's far easier to conduct a brute force attack if you've compromised the laptop, if you've walked out with the hard drive, because then you can either reset uh, the security account manager database, or you can actually conduct a, a fairly effective offline attack at your leisure. Once you have the laptop, you've got all of the assets, you've got all of the data. You just might need to do a little bit of, of breaking in to actually compromise it. Most of the time, data on laptops, you don't even really need to log in to access. Why? Because it's written to the hard drive in a way that's not encrypted, or it's it's protected maybe by ACLs, by discretionary access control, which is fantastic because the user has the perception of security However, as we know now, there is no real security from coming in from outside the laptop. So compromising it with an offline attack, compromising it with a parallel uh, installation, that kind of thing. Even reinstalling the operating system right on top, uh, oftentimes if that's what's necessary, it's pretty easy to compromise data that's not encrypted. And if you can crack credentials, that's even better because then you can maybe VPN back into the network or wireless connect back into the network. So you've used this this compromised laptop in order to conduct further attacks, not just on the data that's on the laptop, but certainly on the other assets in the organization. Taking a laptop is absolutely a, a wonderful type of attack because it just gives you so much access to both the data locally and almost always a launching off point to access further data in the enterprise or in the target. Stealing a server is a little bit harder, but it's actually far easier than most administrators or most defenders think. Usually defenders, server administrators or network administrators simply make an assumption that perimeter security is strong enough. We definitely have covered that here 
they assume that the data center protection, the locks, the, the perimeter, the cameras is going to stop anyone from even trying to steal a server. Well, making that assumption gives the ethical hacker quite an edge because once they've stolen, once we've stolen a server or compromised the physical security of a server, there's almost no other depth of defense. With a laptop, there might be encryption or some kind of protection on there somewhere because it's possible that the laptop will get compromised. But in most cases, the server compromise is not even something that comes into their perception. And that's fantastic. Relying on their, their perimeter security is a flaw, but also relying on the good intentions of others when they defend against this, they simply assume that no one's going to take servers. I've seen server rooms that were unlocked. I've seen server closets that were not locked. I've seen switching rooms and, and network areas, network closets that were completely open, not just unlocked, but literally had no door to them. Those are fantastic. They The administrators simply think that the combination of having a decent perimeter and the fact that no one would steal my assets is a great defense. And as an ethical hacker, that's our favorite thing to see because, of course, nobody would attack your systems except me. And then once we've got access to a server, physical access to a server, oftentimes not just the data on the server is compromised, but certainly remote data because servers are pretty much internetworked. Servers talk to other servers. Servers talk to clients. So all kinds of compromises whether it's actually taking the server and going away with it and looking at the data or installing something on the server that actually sniffs IO uh, or sniffs data and gives us information not just on what's going on on the server, but other stuff that's happening on the network or in the enterprise. That's fantastic. It also potentially allows us to replace that server with our server. We can actually take the server uh, credentials pop them onto our own server, and then pop our server on the network, replacing the server. So then we've got a really super, super effective man-in-the-middle imposter type of attack. Even beyond stealing a server or comp physical compromise of a server, physical compromise of a key infrastructure server, like a domain controller, is absolutely the, the golden calf of attacks. Physical access to a domain controller or another key infrastructure server essentially gives us unlimited anything, whatever we want. You name it, you've got the access to it. There is very, very, very little that any kind of, of enterprise administrator or domain administrator, network administrator can do to defend against an attack once we've got a key infrastructure server compromised. I, I have trouble actually enumerating the number of naughty things that I can do on a network once I've got a domain controller. And so typically in an ethical hacking attack, if I model it properly, once I can actually put my hand on a domain controller in a way that no one else can see it, that's it. I've actually compromised everything that I need to compromise. And some folks might argue, well, you can actually defend against it. You might have a malware scanner on the domain controller, and that's an extremely rare occurrence. or Maybe there's some really good defenses there some other way. Actually, no, um, doesn't happen. What if I've got data encryption on the domain controller hard drive? That's also yet another unlikely, highly unlikely occurrence. So typically speaking, I can install, um, I can do group policy configuration. I can install malware. I can deploy malware throughout the enterprise. I can easily conduct a denial of service attack with maybe three or four commands, take about a minute. I could, I can take the entire network down. I can steal information that will allow me to compromise all users' passwords over time, allow me to compromise, uh, secrets, system secrets, uh, secret keys and so forth, uh, if you've got a PKI server, oftentimes domain controllers are also certification authorities, PKI servers, VPN servers, anything like that, really. Domain controller access or any key infrastructure server access means you own that system. You own the entire network and everything that relies on it. That is the end game for us here for physical compromise. In fact, I was involved in, a, in an incident response at one point where a domain controller hard drive had been stolen while the domain controller was up. And after looking around and, and doing some examination, we came to the conclusion that the only way to prevent the attacker from conducting further attacks 
was actually to level the entire enterprise and rebuild it from scratch on the IT side. Literally take the entire thing offline and start again from scratch. That was the only way to contain that attack. Otherwise, there was no way to prevent the attacker from conducting further attacks, whether it was data compromise, uh, denial of service, and so forth. There was just no way to keep them out after that. 